Hey, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop. We're back after a week hiatus, and uh, our guest tonight is Kevin Gershan. Kevin, wave hello. Hello. So uh, we're uh, we, we you're a CBS producer. If you've got a question for him, throw it in Clubhouse right now or in the Facebook chat room because you'll be able to ask him. I got lots of questions. George has questions. We got lots of stuff to talk about. So join us right now for VoiceOver Body Shop. Right now. Stay tuned. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. And hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. Hi, and I'm George Whittem. A professional <laughs> broadcaster. <laughs> There's one. And this is voiceover. Body shop. Or VO. B.S. B.S. Well, As Jeff voice, was late tonight. We That's are, okay, Jeff. We still we, love you. Way out of sync tonight. But anyway. So we've been gone for a week. And uh, lots of stuff has happened in the voiceover world. And uh, we're here to uh, talk... Uh, voiceover that's why we're here and uh we've got a great guest tonight um george it's it sounds like you've you've been busy tumbling across the hills of southern california once again oh uh, yes i like mountain biking but sometimes it can be a little dangerous just a little I'm show fine. him your arm I just scraped show him your arm i scraped my knee scraped my arm Jeez. and i pulled a muscle on the right side of my lower back so i'm, I'm leaning on a heating pad <laughs> <laughs> I'll be off the bike for a couple of weeks, I think. But thankfully, the gym just opened up here in the apartment complex. <laughs> so now I can do rowing and, you know, that kind of stuff. Low impact stuff. Outstanding. Well, we'd like to make an impact on your voiceover business, if we can. All you people listening out there. Uh, That's a good one, watch- man. I thank you. You're, uh, you're watching on Facebook. You're watching on our VOBS.TV uh, webpage. You are watching perhaps on YouTube. And we have a big crowd joining us on Clubhouse. Danny Burnside's in there. And uh, if you've got a question, let uh, any one of the people that are running those particular things know <laughs> that you have a question. Jeff Holman is in the the Facebook chat room. And uh, Danny Burnside is running our, our chat over in Clubhouse, which allows us to basically do the Larry King, may he rest in peace type of thing. That's right. Uh, anyway, it's time to introduce our guest. Joining us from some nursing home in Southern California is... Uh, <laughs> is Joining for, the injured crew tonight. Yeah, really. Uh, he's the longest-running producer at CBS First Run Syndication. 42 years he's been there, and he does everything, and he's going to tell us all about it. Let's join him now. Kevin Gershank. Kevin, welcome to the show. Hello, George. Hello, Dan. George, I see your injury, and I raise you my knee injury, which is why I'm laying in the bed instead of uh, my office or a much better virtual backdrop, but uh, it adds to the mystery. It does. But it's a classy-looking headboard, so we'll, we'll, Thank just, you. we'll just leave it leave it at that. 
I got uh, it at the late at the late California furniture out in the West Valley. It's really a great place. Cool. Ooh, I'll remember that. Anyway, we're here to talk about voiceover, and uh, but we're going to break a little away from that a little bit. Uh, you're, you're a little bit different than our usual guests who are voice actors and uh, casting directors and all that kind of stuff. But tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I started in uh, radio. I loved radio as early as uh, okay. elementary school. And uh, you used to hang out at uh, the, I see the Hat Boss Radio 93 KHJ and worked at radio stations like K100 and KMPC and K-Earth 101. And I produced uh, shows for uh, a lot of the guys who did game shows. I worked with Robert W. Morgan and The Real Don Steele and uh, Gary Owens and Wake Martindale and Jeff Edwards. And hello, me. <laughs> and uh, along the way, a lot of them also did voiceovers. So I got to go with them to voiceover auditions. I got to go with them uh, as a teenager to a lot of these things. And they then introduced me a lot of their VO friends. Gary, of course, doing a lot of VOs. And then he was in the animation world. So I got to meet a lot of the old school animation people, uh, you know, whether it was from Mel Blanc on up. Uh, Neil Ross, who did a lot of G.I. Joe and Transformers, eventually worked at KMPC. And uh, I got to meet him there. And then... So as I got into television, uh, it was an easy transition to oversee and produce and direct and write for a lot of the great voiceover people, the late Don LaFontaine. I worked with him. I worked with him and Randy Thomas, who I both did Entertainment Tonight, which is one of our first run syndication shows for many years. And um, so I've had an opportunity to work with all the big names, whether it was, you know, most of them are dead now. The uh, Ernie Andersons and the uh, uh, Casey Kasems and the Danny Darks and the Chuck Rileys, uh, you know, and the John Harlins and all, fi all five guys in the limo. Uh, so uh, it's been really great experience for me. So now working at CBS Media Ventures, formerly CBS Television Distribution, formerly Paramount Domestic Television. It is the first run syndication division of Viacom CBS. And uh, I uh, oversee the voiceovers for all the shows, Entertainment Tonight, uh, Inside Edition, Dr. Phil, The Doctors, Rachel Ray, uh, Daily Mail TV, The Drew Barrymore Show, Judge Judy, Hot Bench, Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy just to name a few all at once i juggle as well yeah. <laughs> speaking of those five guys in the limo would this be an appropriate time to mention i think it would special? be great i think it would be great because one of the guys in the limo who started out in radio was a guy by the name of mark elliott he is the cherished voice of disney for many years did the first star wars trailer uh passed away over the weekend and if we can virtually raise a glass to him he was such a nice guy and so kind to everybody he met uh roll him george for those who don't know what five men in a limo is here's a little history lesson Well, sir, well, sir tonight's, tonight's tonight. tonight. That's right. In a world where the success of an industry depends upon the creative ability of a few, great races must be recognized. The 26th Annual Hollywood Reporter Keon Awards. Shall I head directly to the DGA? No, not yet. First, we have to assemble our team. Our team? Imagine five of the top voiceover artists in our country, all in one car. Mine. Meet, meet John Leader. A simple man in a complicated world. But tonight, for one heart-stopping moment, quite possibly a hero. <laughs> yes. Now that's a knife. That guy's been in my house. Would you believe that? It. A voice. 65 million years in the making. Ominous. Mysterious. Hung like a horse. <laughs> Rated R. Under 17, not admitted without parent. Well, are we prepared to move on to the ceremony? Prepared? 
Nothing could ever prepare you for what awaits you at the ceremony. Meet Mark Elliott, the cherished voice of the most beloved animated classics of our time. Featuring all your favorite Disney characters, Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, Timon, Pumbaa, Pocahontas, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Hercules, Beauty and the Beast, Winnie the Pooh, Bumper, Dot, Sleepy, Sneezy, and the ever-delightful Dopey. With special songs by the Academy Award-winning team that brought you Beauty and the Beast and Aladdin. Okay, anyone left, sir? Only, Only one, one man. man. Excuse me. Sure, sure. Hal. Hi, Don. It's Hal Douglas. Who? Who? Hal. Hal Chuck. <laughs> I forgot about that. Adventure. Romance. Romance. I make it all look so easy. And so cool. Oh, yeah. Sir, Sir, are we are going we to going the going awards, to awards now? now? Not yet. Not yet. Now. 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 You know, Clinton, you may call them the awards, but for the few with the real courage to call themselves vendors, it's going to be the white knuckle thrill ride of the year. I think we get the idea, right? Yeah, I, I think we, we get that. Yeah. But uh, much respect <laughs> to all those guys. Mark and we lost out. Al, was it Al Chalk passed away last yeah. year? I believe so. Yeah. Wow. My goodness. So cool to see that. Thanks for, thanks for reminding us about Mark because he was he was a super much super duper under the radar guy, right? Super under the radar, wasn't out there promoting himself, doing stuff. He just liked to go and do the work and help people where he could. He was a great guy. Wow, super yeah. cool. And, and working with all this great talent, you know, what was that like? I mean, they were probably very easy to direct and uh, were were super pros to work with. You know, some are easy to, to direct. Others are not. I'll leave them out of that. You know, <laughs> la, la, uh, a lot of people, depending on they go, don't like to be line read. Um, a lot of times I tend to write for the artist that's doing it. I don't write the copy and try to do it. I try to think, who did I select to be my voice? And I write to their pace and I write to their strengths as opposed to trying to bend them to my will. Um and uh, sometimes a line read is necessary. Uh, and the, the good ones, uh, the late Don LaFontaine said, you're going to line read me? I said, yes, I am. He says, okay, I'll take it from you. So it was, it was a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> and by line, meeting, meaning line reading, you meant? Well, so like if there's you know, a line, you know, right. uh, he, he knows how to say in a world. Right. But maybe if he had gone in a world and I said, no, I want it in a world. In a world. Yeah, well, you know, okay. so if, yeah. Uh, so right. some sometimes to get the right inflection, to get the right pacing, what you want to hit, sometimes uh, uh, the copy usually directs itself, but not always. Ah, uh, okay. Now you also have a, a background in music production, and you do all the you you're in charge of all the music that goes with all these different shows. All the shows that I mentioned, I also oversee and produce all the themes and background music score for those, which make up the CBS Media Ventures Music Library. Music is created for each show individually based on its needs, and it now has over close to thirty thousand cuts in that that are all owned by uh, CBS. And that is a, an income source for the studio as well. And so it's interesting because uh, you're in the studio doing different things. So when you are in the studio producing and mixing for music, it is completely a different skill set than uh, producing and engineering uh, for voiceover. Uh, they are two different. The only similarity is you might be using the same kind of microphones, the same kind of boards, the same kind of plugins, the same part, part of outboard gear, and you might be using uh, Pro Tools or Cakewalk or whatever you use. Uh, so things seem similar, but it is a completely different skill set. Good to know. Once again, we're talking with Kevin Gershan. He is a producer 
of just about everything over at CBS Media I, I learned that uh, <laughs> it may seem similar rule when I moved to L.A. in 2004, thinking I'm just going to plunge headfirst into film production mixing and doing production mixing on set. I was like, great. I've recorded everything. I know how to do this. No idea how many unique tools there were, terminologies, methodologies, et cetera. It was, it was quite a trial by fire crash look, course. Look, and, and, and audio is different. So whether you are working in your home studio doing radio, live radio, syndicated radio, voiceover work, out in the field doing recording audio for television, in the field recording audio for film, on a stage uh, mixing for radio uh, commercials, uh, television shows or film, it's different. Like you might not know that generally most film mixes take three people. So it's a long SSL or board or whatever it is. And there's one person doing dialogue, one person doing music, one person doing effects. And not only is that, there is a prelay mixer ahead of all those three people walking in a room who laid out everything position wise where it was supposed to be and put it in a relative space as to where it is theoretically if the prelay person did it right the mixer wouldn't have to do anything but they uh but they all do and they have to you know it, it's a good reference standpoint so all your uh work is spent uh, in the less expensive prelay portion of the mix, as opposed to the super expensive three three man mix uh, stage. Fascinating. Uh, you know, we all hear the word producer all the time. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, George and I say we're the producers of VOBS. You know, and it seems like whoever is the star of a show these days is produce executive producer. You know, whoever it is that's also starring in it too. But I guess it means a lot of different things to a lot of different people including you, I suppose. What does it, it really mean in, in, in your world? It, it, producer is different. It's some, you know, sometimes producer is just a money guy who brings money to a film or a television show. Uh, another, you know, um, the world is different now. So in the voiceover world, as a voiceover artist, you need to be your own producer, your own director, your own voice talent, your own engineer, and in and and your own marketer as well. So for me as a producer, um, I I write or oversee writers for voiceovers, um, but I tend to like to write it myself. Uh, and then when the session happens, I am there directing the session to make sure it is giving it the correct read and the tone that I want. So many people hand it off nowadays in the voiceover world. A lot of times scripts are just sent out and then they're sent back and maybe they're not to time or to time or something's wrong and you got to have it redone or there is no time and you have to tolerate a read that is different than you want. So uh, I pretty much insist that uh, unless it's absolutely impossible for me to be there, I write the copy, I time out the copy, I paste the copy for the talent that I have reading it, and then I'm there when they record it for both support and making sure that I get what I want. So my definition of producing is seeing it from concept to delivery. That's And that's, and that's, that's a that's lot, lot of things. things. Um, All of a sudden we're getting some slapback. Slap yeah, I yeah, wonder where that's, that's coming from. from. You have an open spe open uh, speaker, Sue. There we go. There we go. Got it. Okay. Thank you, Sue. Thank you. Um, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, oh, we're I talking talking about you know being a producer. What's what's your what's it been like you know during COVID? I mean, you because apparently you've well, been it's, sitting it's there in bed the whole time there. Right? Yeah. No. 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 <laughs> this is just recent. But uh, most of us, uh, uh, I'm based at CBS Studio Center in uh, Studio City. Uh, and uh, I'm based on the Entertainment Tonight set. And uh, other than recently, uh, the 200 people that work on that show haven't been at work since the 12th of March of last year. Uh, we just recently have talent and the booth back shooting on our stage. Everybody was shooting from home. Um, but I pretty much do everything from home. I'm completely set up. I have complete connectivity here. I got to you know, high speed internet, backup internets, computers, um, and anything we need to do, we either have Zoom meetings 
or uh, we have our own proprietary VOIP boxes that all the talent have in their homes to do their voiceovers with. And so when we do a voiceover, we uh, connect with them on Zoom to see them. Uh, we email them or text them the copy and they they track and we record it into our system uh, and dump it into a uh, network server for all the editors to be able to drop them in. Can you tell us more about the proprietary VOIP boxes that you're using? Uh, we have an engineer that works with us that built some proprietary VOIP boxes. Um, cool. I don't know if I have a picture of one, but, it, you know, it's kind of like uh, the Comrex box a little bit, but it's specific for us because CBS has such specific firewall rules and stuff like that. We had to build right. something that could be used across the CBS network uh, that would, uh, you know, could work through the firewalls and stuff like that because they're very leery about opening up, uh, you know, holes in the fire, in the firewall to do mm -hmm. that. I call them the CBS uh, firewall police. Uh, they, they work very, very well. So everybody has uh, uh you know the, what? What is the Comrex box called? It's a brick link. Yeah, there's a there's a yeah there's a brick link, and then there's another one that they use. Let me just see what it is. Access. To, no, 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 no. Let's see what. Oh, it's I got can. a new. There's a newer one that uses Opus. Uh, yes, that's what it is. Comrex. I can't remember the name of it. We yeah, you and I talked many moons ago about what actors could have that they could take with them. Correct. That could do all of this magic stuff. And one of the barriers to entry, other than finding the ultimate microphone that you could use anywhere without worrying about acoustics, is um, is was the connectivity issue. And we Correct. couldn't use things like Source Connect because we couldn't punch holes but, in the firewall, so to speak. Correct. So, uh, again, for me, and, you know, like uh, – I, for the type of work that we do for voiceovers, for promos and stuff like that, I tend to like a Sennheiser 416. Um, it's not very, it's not particularly warm, but if you if you work the mic right and you don't and you don't and you don't pop it, it has a lot lot of punch to it and stuff like mm -hmm. that. So that's my favorite general microphone for voiceover people in television. Mm -hmm. But in narration and stuff like that, you know, I I I I like a, a U87, not the AI, and I like the TLM 103. Uh and uh of course my favorite microphone if if you, if I had money would be a Telefunken U47 long body. Wouldn't but we? All? <laughs> yeah, but they're 10 grand. And uh if you have either a male or female voice in a closer to a baritone lower kind of voice, it's really really great. Also an old AKG C12, not not the new ones. Those are the C AKG C12 VRs are terrible in my opinion. Hope they're not a sponsor. Uh, nope, not yet. <laughs> uh, well, not now. Okay, yeah, certainly <laughs> yeah. not now. No. So yeah, there, and 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 quite frankly, there's a lot of um, I, I like the Shure SM5B. Depends mm -hmm. on you know. That, the you one know, that was the, completely ensconced mm -hmm. in foam. It looked like a foam. <laughs> Correct. Well, no, no, no. Capsule? That's the that, that's the SM7B. That's the SM. I, I, I like the SM7B. The SM5B is the football. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the football. Yeah. <laughs> and and that was you know that was a good unforgiving radio mic like the Electro Voice RE20 and stuff like that. Hard. What's it? What's interesting for me? All the VO mics I like for promo were formerly boom mics. You know, whether right. it was an RCA BK5B or whatever it is, the a lot of the radio mics are good, but all the radio mics that are good were former kick drum mics because it was hard to pop them. So an RE20 right. was a kick drum mic, a 414 was a kick drum mic, right? So, Big can, diaphragm, yeah. yeah, as a producer, can you actually hear the difference in these mics? from one person to another could you listen uh, to somebody and say yeah that's a u87 you know i ge i generally guess pretty good i like to i like to play the game what microphone and what mic pre are they using um and sometimes you know you can tell a 416 on a focus right red 7 you can tell a u87 you know on a manly you know it, it, there there's there's certain uh, signature algorithms that you, if you have a trained ear, you can hear. Now, does it mat? Does it matter that much? Like I, you know, like you said in your intro, uh, Don LaFontaine could talk on a uh, 
uh, Shure SM58 uh, in a on a realistic mic pre, and he'd sound fantastic. <laughs> you know, what's funny is the reason I ever got to work with Don was because of a technical issue. Um, he was on a manly cardioid reference mic, but there was a buzz. And there was a buzz because he was running that straight into a Mackie 32 by 8 mixing console. Those huge ones you'd see in bars yeah. all the time. That's what he had in his studio. And uh, long, long story short, I never would have worked with Don had the tube in his manly mic preamp blown out sometime before that. And Don didn't know what to do at the time, so he patched around it. So he just removed the dead preamp and ran it right to the Mackie. And that was it. Turned up the gain on the Mackie and he went back to work. But he had all this buzz going on in the studio. And that's that's the only reason I ever got to work with him. Because Steve Nafshin said, can you go help out, Don? He's bugging me all the time. Now we're hearing a buzz. I need He, he needs a guy. Can you go help him out? Yeah. You're, you're the guy, for sure. I wasn't the guy at that point. I was a guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I was lucky. I was lucky. Yeah. But uh, that's, that, I have to thank Manly and their tubes for needing, uh, for Don needing me to come over. Yeah. yeah no, the, 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 look, that Manly mic and the Manly Vox box are, are two great things. You, you, you don't need all that depending on, you know, on your voice. There are, there are plenty of things that are reasonable, whatever your budget level is, uh, to uh, get you to sound good. Absolutely. All right. Uh, once again, if you've got a question for Kevin Gershan about uh, the production process, uh, put it in the chat room in Facebook, or you can line up on Clubhouse, and we'll take your questions live from there in just a couple of minutes, so stay tuned for that. What do you look for in outside, in, in looking for new talent? I mean, we just saw the greatest generation of, you know, voiceover announcers, and that style is pretty much gone anyway. But and there's probably and there's a whole new generation of people doing that type of work. Are you still, you know, always on the prowl for somebody, or so you hear somebody well, somewhere and go, you know, you know, he'd be good on this, or? A ab absolutely, I'm always listening to everyone everywhere from every agency, from every site that's posted, and you know, people reach out to me and stuff like that, and and I and I, and I listen. Um, generally speaking, for me on all the CBS shows, as you can imagine. Uh, when we are casting for those, I generally have an idea of who I want. It's rare that uh, I send out something wide and get you know 20 or 30 submissions from the big agencies and go through them. I already know who I want. I, I, I have an idea in my head based on the show who the top three people would be. And maybe I audition the top three people and I know all these people. So for the most part, I, I call them directly. Yeah, you know, I got to deal with their agent eventually. But yes, I listen to everything. And to your point about that style is gone, uh, some of that style is gone. There is still room for all styles everywhere. What's happened is what got away from the big announcer voice is now they just want the big announcer voice. So you still might need to have some pipes, <laughs> but instead of talking like this, you'll just talk like this. And you still will use whatever you have in your toolbox. But it's interesting. Every Certain things need different things. They say they want a, a younger, more conversational, non-announcery read. What I can uh, tell voiceover people is try to figure out what it is that they really want versus what it is that they're saying, because they tell you they want conversational and then you give them conversational and then there's not enough sell in it. One of the things for years, it was like, oh, we don't want any radio announcers because yeah, they all line. talk like this. And uh, interestingly, sometimes I found uh, like with live shows, let's take, we, I mentioned Randy Thomas before, uh, Randy came from radio. So when it comes to a live announce on a live show, whether it's the Oscars, whether it's the Tony Awards, whatever it is, you want a radio person. She has all the voiceover sensibilities, but she, ha she has, oh, I'm live. I'm not going to screw this up. And she can think on the fly live. So a lot of times for live announce, 
radio people who've been able to transition out of the disc jockey into a personality work great. Also, we were casting something for Entertainment Tonight where we were on the Queen Mary 2 when it launched, and we wanted a British announcer. So uh, we were tasked <clears throat> to go out and hire a British actor. So we got three top British actors, name British actors, who we auditioned for the role. Well, they couldn't do it. We ended up hiring Neil Ross, who was able to do a British voice, but had enough promo radio in him that he knew what to punch. So you need people with certain skill sets to do things. There are new shows that still have the big voice, you know, and that's important. So just because the big baritone Don LaFontaine, uh, uh, John Harlan voices and whatever it is seem to be out, they're not always out. Bill Ratner is still working. Movie trailers are still using uh, big voices. They're not using all light voices. Uh, but there is certainly a time and a place for the lighter, punchier reads. There are there are plenty of before everybody had a big baritone voice if, and it was a guy now there's men there's women of every shade of gray so don't don't uh put yourself out if you say you don't have the pipes it used to be pipes trumped interpretation now interpretation trumps pipes every time so if you're spot on on your interpretation and your voice is a little less than baritone as a man, you will get it. As a woman, uh, everything from sounding like a 15-year-old boy to uh, sounding like Brenda Vaccaro is going to – everything is there. Yep. And, and who remembers Brenda Vaccaro? When know. do you think the revolution happened? Before we go to break, when do you think the revolution happened when that – that I'm sure it wasn't like an overnight thing, but uh... – it, 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 it wasn't. The revolution happened probably in the – mid 80s when oh. uh younger producers were starting to get in and maybe some younger skewing shows were getting on tv and, and may, maybe around the time the fox network launched mm -hmm. okay whatever that was maybe that further back than i would have thought okay gotcha. yeah and uh people were looking for something different we can take um when the when the uh simpsons came on you know, uh, they weren't looking for a, a big voice. Yeah, and so Cipriano, I, right? Right. And I and, you know, Joe was a radio, another radio guy and really hadn't done anything. And whereas someone, you know, there was a big group of people who would never cast a Joe Cipriano, but he was different and he punched mm -hmm. through. And then later, after a couple of years, you wouldn't want anybody but him doing that. Right. Mm -hmm. Once again, we're talking oh. with uh, Kevin Gershan. We're going to take a quick break right now. Uh, again, if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room in Facebook or uh, raise your hand over on Clubhouse, and uh, we'll get to those questions right after these important messages. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. Accents, dialects, scary words to a lot of VO talent who simply won't audition for something that requires an accent or a dialect. Why? They've already told themselves they can't do them, couldn't learn how and would just suck if they tried. So they never try. They give up. They say, nope, I can't. But you can. 
David H. Lawrence XVII's accent dialect coach Jim Johnson has it down to his science, and he can help. His accents class is open for registration. And get this, you'll save $300 off the tuition if you register before tomorrow night, April 6th at 9 p.m. Pacific time. Work directly with Jim during the class and get a library of accent building tools for you to use whenever one of those auditions comes up. Act quickly. This special $300 tuition rebate ends tomorrow night and class begins next Monday. Go to voheroes.com forward slash accents. When you register in the comments field, please add David sent me. Once again, go to voheroes.com forward slash accents. Let's face it. If you're a voice talent, not everyone in your family or close friends really understands what you need for your home voiceover studio. You want a what? Well, VoiceOverEssentials.com has the perfect answer when it comes to birthdays and other gift-giving for us voiceover folk. New for the first time ever, after countless requests, VoiceOverEssentials.com is thrilled to offer the VoiceOver Essentials gift card. You pick the amount you want to give, and they take care of the rest. The recipient will receive an email with their digital gift card and gift code to use on anything they offer on VoiceOverEssentials.com. Give them or give yourself the gift of getting exactly what you want, like the Harlan Hogan VO1A microphone, the Portabooth Pro or Plus, Harlan Hogan Signature Series VoiceOver Optimized Headphones. A lot of what? Go to voiceoveressentials.com and click on Shop and Gift Cards and choose the amount. Gift cards now at voiceoveressentials.com. Thanks, Harlan. I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did! I did hear the voice of a body shop. Beetle body shop. And we are back with Kevin Gershan and uh, George Woodham down there, and we're, uh, we're ready to take a lot of questions from people. Uh, so far, you've given us some real golden nuggets about the, the production process and what you're looking for, for uh, in voiceover talent, so we really appreciate that. George, what do we got in question-wise? Yeah. yeah, we actually have a couple lined up. Danny, why don't you let us know who's up at bat? Sure, we got Leslie. Leslie, you're on. Hey, Danny. As always, really love your, your room. Always so informative. This is a great talk. I want to ask Kevin. Kevin, I have a Electro Voice RE27. Is that a bad mic to use for commercials and promos? You know, it's not a, it, for me, it's not a uh, bad mic to use. It's perfectly uh, pedestrian. Uh, again, I think a promo mic and a commercial mic are different. I would use a ribbon mic uh, probably for commercials that you can have some proximity effect, get in close and be warmer like a, like a U87 or a TLM 103. And it's tough to beat uh, a 416, uh, Sennheiser 416 for a promo mic. So when you were saying, I'm just afraid that it's so it's crisp, and I don't know if it, if that would work with my voice. Um, I have an cri cri crisp for crisp for promos or crisp for commercials. commercials. Usually, that's a good thing, right? Crisp yeah, for, for pro crisp for promos is good. I like warm for commercials. A 44 BX is that a 44 BX, Dan? No, nah, this is this is a uh, a V3. Oh, all right. Nice mic, but you know. So, so Kevin, so you're. I think when you're mentioning uh, ribbon mics, were you meaning condenser mics, or did you actually say that we should use some try start start trying to use ribbon mics? Uh, condenser mics or ribbon mics. As I said, I like I like I like the uh, as I said the uh, uh, Sennheiser TLM 103. It's nice. Yes, yes. And I and I like a uh, U87, not the AI. Yeah, the the original. The OG U87. Right. So those are those are warm, and I think based on hearing your voice, those will serve your voice well. Um, if you're concerned that the 416 is too punchy, you might want to do an AKG 414 VLS. 414. Um, how about an Audio Technica? Yeah, those the the. I have a 4033 as well. Quite a yeah, collection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the the uh, the Audio Technicas are a good right in the middle of both those mics that I suggested. Great, thanks so much, Kevin. I appreciate it. You got it. Thanks, Leslie. 
Yeah, that sort of brings. By, up by the, the way, questions. those are those. The tech questions are better for George than for me, but I can tell you, I'm just giving you my opinion as to what I like. Well, see, you're the well, guy. You're the guy at the other end, and that's that's <laughs> one of the things that a lot of our audience cares about. Is you yeah. know, it, 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 is is this mic going to be the difference between me booking a job or not? You know, I well, tend I, to tell I, people I, no. Right. I would like I would like to reiterate that performance is everything. That interpretation is going to beat voice. So if you in, if you if you read well and your interpretation is good, and what I'm finding is I don't like your mic. I can have a conversation say, can you swap your mic out? Can you come in here and track it? Can you go to this studio uh, versus you're the one I want? I just don't like your, your home studio. All righty. Uh, we got anybody? Who's next there? Uh, I, got, I got an audience question from, uh, the, from YouTube because we got okay. them coming in from a lot of directions. Okay. You might recognize this name. Randy Thomas <laughs> says, <laughs> oh. She was Hello, curious Randy. after watching the five guys video of those five, who do you remember being the easiest to direct? Mark Elliott was certainly the easiest to direct of that group. Uh, I directed all of them, but I have to say for me, unlike uh, Don was a joy. Don was Don was a joy for me since I've known him since prior to him being a VO guy when he was cutting trailers at 55 uh, 55 post on the Paramount lot uh, and uh, he was always a joy he wanted to get it right uh, usually his agents booked him in you know he you know, he had such a tight window okay I got Don from 215 to 217 you have to get it done in that amount of time. Uh, and that's that not is, a joke, folks. <laughs> right. And that that is uh, in the, you know, ISDN days before he drove around in that limo and went places. His time got very, very limited. And what was great was I'd have a 30 second spot, which was really only 26 seconds. And it would go click, click. And he'd go, boom, throw it, great, done. And so I said, two minutes, <laughs> I only need 30 seconds. <laughs> and uh, he got he he got into a rhythm with all the stuff that we did on Entertainment Tonight. That he we uh, interestingly with with Randy's question, I want to say that Don LaFontaine and Randy Thomas did something that none of the other entertainment news programs did. We didn't have one voice; we had two voices because it was great to have Don's big voice and then have Randy's big female voice on on the stuff that needed to be softer and stuff like that it would you know don could do an emotional read but sometimes you wanted something that was better and he don and randy were a just a a great tag team that we had and i i miss the days of having that all right what do we should we go back to clubhouse yeah let's see who's there chris from san francisco chris you're up bud well, thank you so much, everybody, and thank you for the great opportunity. Learning a lot, as always, and taking notes. Um, still marinating on what George said last week, I think it was, uh, if you're seeing the yellow, let it mellow. If you're seeing the red, you're close to dead. That <laughs> was great advice. <laughs> We're talking uh, about the VU meter, Kevin. Yeah, by right, the way. I got it. <laughs> yeah. Not my first so rodeo. I up, <laughs> yeah. So I grew up in the days of Gunsmoke, starring James Nars, you know, and uh, the streets of San Francisco and all that stuff. And I know you can't give away secrets, but is there any new programming on the horizon that you're excited about? Thank you for your opportunity. Thank you for the time. Um, you know, all the networks now who have uh, uh, streaming channels as well are in the process of producing new things. Uh, generally speaking, the big networks and the big channels uh, all, uh, you know, send their auditions out to uh, the agencies a lot of time that they're familiar with. So it's rare that, you know, they're just going to be out there for you to fish for because it's not how the big places work. Um, the best thing is if you can uh, secure yourself a, uh, a good agent and see if you can get that stuff, of course. But then, you know, every now and then stuff shows up on voice one, two, three, or you hear something. So if you befriend uh, producers, directors, people who work inside television that you know that might just be writers or producers or cameramen or whatever, someone might tip you to, hey, I'm going to work on this new show. Then, uh, you know, half your job as a voiceover person now is uh, half private investigator, half detective. So if you learn of a show, read the trades. Oh, you know, CBS Media Ventures uh, just greenlit this. Okay, try to find out who the producers are. The internet's a wonderful thing. 
search out their emails and stuff like that if you don't have an agent and say, hey, Kevin Gershon, I hear you're working on this new show. Uh, I think I would be perfect for it. Here's my demo. Here's my agent, whatever. Uh, for everybody listening, uh, don't annoy me too much, please, because mm -hmm. as I said, I tend to, to pick who it is. But, you know, reach out through the proper channels and, and, and do that. As I said, I'm pretty much aware of most of the working people who are out there. And of course, it's tough for the people who aren't working as much because they they all want to have a chance to be heard too. So uh, if your agent is good, they gen you know generally an agent will say, I, I want person A, B, and C. And they say, that's fantastic, but have you heard person D? And I say, no, I haven't. Send them along or no, I'm, a no, I'm not interested in hearing them. It's usually the latter, but uh, I do like to hear new people. Got it, got it. We'll go right back. Yeah, generally to... speaking, me and everybody else who work on uh, A-list shows, you know, it's part of it. Uh, you want name recognition, marquee value of the voiceover talent you have. So you want to be able to say, oh, uh, like when we, when we hired Randy Thomas on Entertainment Tonight, it was great because, we go, oh, Randy is the voice of the Academy Awards. So that works with our brand. So in addition to her being able to do the job, she had she was the voice of the Oscars. She was the voice of the Tonys. So a lot of the shows that we covered, it was great. And we even did a segment on her on Entertainment Tonight about that. So uh, a lot of these shows are also looking for not just someone who can do the job, but someone who has a good uh, resume as well. Doesn't hurt. Yeah. That's a brand hurt. identity with, with the brand already, yeah. Yeah. Um, from Facebook, this one's Jay Horace Black, and he says, "Are you getting talent from agents or managers, or a combination of both?" Oh, that's the uh, first part. Well, as I said, again, normally for me, since I know such a wide array of voiceover talent, I usually call them direct and get their agent second. But yeah. most people go through the th four or five major agencies first. Uh, but we also get auditions from managers sometimes. Uh, producers have relationships with managers and they know that uh, they have certain talent and sometimes just because the personal relationship with the manager might be better than the relationship with the agency or the particular agent, you go to the manager hoping that your relationship will lead to a better deal when you're dealing in the overscale world. There's another part to Jay's question. There's several parts, but this one I think is the most important really, which is in commercial work, can one uh, one can get auditions without a with us without a strong demo? Are you saying I should read that again? Sorry, Jay. In commercials, one can get auditions without a strong demo, but is that the same for promo? So, is the promo really a key? Well, <clears throat> uh, it is. It is, and it isn't. If you're booking people who have already done it, whether they have a good demo or not, you know who that is. But your demo is paramount in uh, getting you work because uh, you want to listen to it. And I, I let me just tell you, top load your demo with whatever it is you're trying to do or have multiple demos that are top loaded differently to get those out to the buyer because uh, we are not a patient crowd. So if you have a three minute demo, if we don't hear what we want in the first 20 seconds and, and, ex and but maybe you had what exactly what we wanted at two at the two minute 30 mark oh, chances no. are we aren't going to hear it yeah. so i would recommend that people have multiple versions of their demos where uh the different genres that you do are highlighted in the first 30 seconds all right we got somebody on clubhouse there danny we do pilar from los angeles pilar pilar thank you hi hi kevin hi uh, Hi, I am a bilingual performer, um, so I speak unaccented Spanish as well as English, and I have been doing voiceover for 11 years, and before that I was an on-camera actress on soap operas in Colombia. And I have been in L.A. for almost two years and have done a lot of commercial work, uh, actually bilingually, um, same spot, both languages. Oh, what do you see in terms of the... Uh, landscape of a bilingual performer getting into and a woman getting into um, promo and how does someone you kind of already answered this question but how does someone like myself get heard by someone like you 
Well, interestingly, bilingual and Spanglishy is bigger than ever now, uh, especially on the West Coast. And there's a lot of work for um, non-specific regional dialect stuff. So if you if you can sound like you're not from a specific region, that's all the better because it works everywhere. Uh, Sylvia Viagran does both English language and Spanish language. She's probably the leader in the bilingual Spanglish uh, female voiceovers that does Spanish. She's she, uh, I always like to refer to her as the she's the Spanish language Randy Thomas. And uh, you could probably seek her out. She's she's uh, very generous uh, with her time and questions and loves to mentor people. Uh, you know, so seek her out through her agent, Sylvia Viagran, and, uh, you know, send her an email. And uh, I bet you she would answer some of the landscape that she has gotten. But there's a lot of Spanish language work out there. Uh, and uh, the fact that you could do both is great. Is there any real live announced stuff still going on out there? I mean, we have, obviously with the award shows and stuff like well, that. Well, you know, there there's less of it now during uh, COVID times, but uh, April 15th, uh, California said a lot of live events can come back. I know the Oscars is planning on being live. And so, yes, there's a lot of live opportunities out there, although probably in this transitional period, uh, a lot of the stuff will be pre recorded. All righty. Joe, do you want to get that question from Ed Kelly? Absolutely. This is Ed on uh, from our YouTube chat. Uh, why does Kevin prefer the U87 to the <laughs> U87 AI? We knew we were going to get that question. So, Kevin, okay. in a nutshell. <laughs> uh, the U87 AI is too crunchy for me. And I think the U87 AI, while still a good microphone, lacks the warmth that the Tube 87 uh, has and depending on you know if you're trying to do a narration or a commercial you know and you're not talking like this and you're more talking like this you want i think the uh uh tube 87 gives you a lot more warmth and uh air a lot of it has to do with air than the than the 87 ai the 87 ai is still a very good mic and if you have it already i wouldn't say to trash it and go get the other but short of that i feel i mean george you can weigh weigh in on this as well i think it's a warmer breathier mic yeah i don't for whatever reason vintage microphones the the voicing was different they weren't so bright and crisp they were they were warmer and um, so that can be more flattering. A lot of people like older versions of a lot of the mics, including, including the AKG uh, 414. The, one of the earliest models was the EB. And uh, a lot of people like that sound because it's not it's overly great. crisp and crunchy and bright. Right. And, so, the, and, the, and the 414 EB during the uh, Casey Kasem, Danny Dark era at NBC was their mic of choice. And it was really warm and it was really great and it had a lot of air. Do you know about the Austrian audio mics, Kevin? Have you heard about them? Yes. They are the engineers from those microphones. And yeah. The new, uh, yeah. The new one uh, that they released, the um, OC818, is really good. It's a re really, really nice. Really, really good. Awesome. Um, how about back to Clubhouse? Clubhouse? Yes. What do we got, Danny? Nathan up. Nathan, what's your question, bud? Hey, Kevin. Nice to – thanks for – being up here and taking the time. Um, so, I mean, it was similar to Pilar's question and I kind of answered it, but you, you said that you, you have voice actors that you know well. Where does that relationship start? Does that start from, hey, I think I'd be great for this project, or does it start from sending out an audition, getting it from an agent, and be like, wow, this guy's amazing? Well, all right. So here, for me, <laughs> after 42 years of doing this uh, and keeping up on it, I have – worked with or heard all the, you know, certainly the top 50 people uh, doing everything. So I, I know what people are capable of doing. And usually if I'm thinking of something, I usually have one of those voices in mind and reach out to them. And if there's not a conflict uh, and uh, we can negotiate a fair price, then I usually go, and remember, people don't know what they like. People like what they know. And I'm no different than anybody else. Um, time is money. So uh, 
let's just say it was you, for example, and your voice range was right, and I heard your and I heard your stuff. Well, I haven't worked with you, so uh, the question is, am I going to take a chance on you being able to sit down in the chair and nail it on the first read? Um, one of the things besides having the voice and the interpretation is being able to come in and get it done in one take, uh, two takes at the max. We have very little patience for spending uh, uh, 40 minutes with you on a 26 second read. Makes sense. Well, Kevin, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Uh, lots of real golden nuggets of info out there that people really needed to hear. And we appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, we knew we'd get more. We knew we'd get more questions than there was time. But that's uh, that's quality. We're we're glad that people were so engaged. Absolutely, lots of tech stuff. But we can get to that in our next segment. But anyway, thanks for being with us. And uh, you know, get out of bed once in a while. It'll be it, it, it's kind of nice. <laughs> I'll try to do it. And thanks everybody for uh, tuning in. I hope uh, I, uh, the information was helpful. All righty. Kevin Gershon. Okay, Thanks, George Kevin. and I will be right back to wrap it up right after this. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The Voice of Our Body Shop. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. It's that time of the show where we get to plug away about our wonderful sponsors, Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect, an incredibly long-living and well-loved tool in the voiceover production world because it allows actors to connect to the major studios directly into their Pro Tools timeline as painlessly as possible. Um, producers love it for that reason, by the way. I mean, there's a lot of technologies uh, Kevin mentioned they at uh, CBS, they use their own proprietary systems. There are a lot of different ways to connect, but the beauty of Source Connect by far is the ease of the way it works in the workflow for producers. The fact that they can connect to you as talent, have your voice be right there in their Pro Tools timeline, whatever they're using. It doesn't have to be Pro Tools, but certainly that's what a lot of the producers are using. And when they have you during that session and they give you the direction or, or a director is being piped in from somewhere else, the session when you uh, are let go is in the can. It's done. The audio is there. It's captured at high quality. And they can immediately get signed off by the client or get right to production or post. And that's one of the major reasons why it's still loved all these years later with so many other systems out there. So if you want to get a, a demo, head over to source-elements.com and get it 15-day trial so you can get up and running and familiar with this production tool. It is really, uh, what, it's just one of those things you have to have in your toolbox, toolbox if you're a working pro voice actor. But let's come back and wrap it up right after this. Yep, this is VOBS, proven anybody. Yeah, but we've been doing it for 10 years. <laughs> so Tell anybody, just anybody. That's our, sar we love our sarcastic Howard Kogan, the voice of Jack <laughs> FM, the most sarcastic radio personality <laughs> voice in, in history. And the guy could not be better typecast because I know, I know how Howard is in real life. Absolutely. Uh, All right. Well, next week on this show, we will have Tech Talk number 54. If you want to stay tuned after this, you can be there for the live taping of that. 
Uh, and if you've got a tech question, apparently we got a few tech questions while Kevin Gershan was here. So uh, we can uh, we can cover those in Tech Talk. So stick around, especially if you're on Clubhouse. We want to hear from you. Uh, who are our donors of the week? Our donors include the illustrious Harlan Hogan's voiceover essentials. Oh, that's our sponsors. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, our donors are something in, different. In the green. That's what happens when we take three weeks off. My brain goes into sleep mode. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Philip Sapir, Thomas Pinto, Shelly Avellino, Renata, Renata, Natasha. Natasha Marchevka. I got nervous. I knew I had to read her last name, so I botched her first name. You know, that's how it works. <laughs> Natasha Marchevka, Brian Page, George A. Whittem, my dad. Patty Gibbons, Rob Rader, our writer. He'll tell us which one is the right one. Uh, Greg Thomas, Antland Productions, Shauna Pennington Baird, Martha Kahn, and Don Griffith all made donations to our show, which we highly, highly appreciate. Absolutely. Uh, you know, you can join our mailing list too. It's almost to 800, George. So hey. get on there and then you'll That's know who's going to be on list. in the next day or so. Sure uh, is. We also need to thank our sponsors, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements, makers of Source Connect. VOHeroes.com. VoiceActorWebsites.com. And JMC Demos. Well, and can I you, say one more thing before we slip into the final closeout and thank you yous on betcha. the show? You betcha. I want to say something about Kevin, now that he's not here. Um <laughs> Because he might have been embarrassed. I don't know. He's a good guy. I want to say how much of a mensch Kevin is. Years and years and years ago, when I was still really getting my company started, I was starting a family. All these things were happening very quickly. Business for me was taking a major slump. This was probably around 2008. Uh, child was coming, et cetera, et cetera. Overspending. Whatever it was, Kevin, uh, basically in a nutshell, funded my survival in a way that he probably didn't expect to. Um, he, he needed, uh, he wanted, we were working and collaborating on making the ultimate super portable voiceover kit. And so I quoted him on this prod, this whole package, everything I thought it should have the whole thing. And he paid me the full amount upfront, no questions asked to put this package together. Long story short, a lot of that money did not go where it was supposed to. It went to paying other things. And embarrassingly, I told Kevin what was going on. And he told me, don't you worry about it. That's a mensch. That's, that's the definition and, of it. And the reason he's here today, partly, is because I had a very good couple of months, and I paid off the entire debt to him in one, almost one fell swoop. I had to pay in a few pieces, but that was technical reasons. But I was able to pay him off. Um, pay him off, that's not the right way of saying it. I was able to repay him. Finally, after more than 10 years, 12 years, I think it was, which was huge for me to let that off my chest, to clear the karma. And that's why I was so glad that he was able to join us today. I couldn't, I couldn't tell him face to face today because I don't think it could have held it together, but I didn't even hold it together now. But that, there you go. I just wanted to be able to say that before we wrapped up. He is truly a mensch. All righty. Well, thinking of other mentions we have, uh, Jeff Holman, is. Uh, we need to thank him for monitoring our chat room and Facebook, and Danny Burnside over on Clubhouse. Yeah. If you're on Clubhouse, stick around, because we're going to continue with Tech Talk in just a minute or two. Our wonderful technical director is Sue Merlino, doing a bang-up job, and of course, Lee Penny yeah. for being Lee Penny. Uh, well, that was, that was great. Great stuff from Kevin. Of course... He starts talking about microphones and, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's not the microphone that's going to get you the work. It's the guys that have already got the work that are getting those microphones. So it, don't, yeah. don't confuse the two. We can talk about that in Tech Talk. So stay tuned for that. Uh, you know, this is not an easy business. You know, and everybody sends us in stuff and they're like, does it sound good? Well, look, if it sounds good, it is good. Taking a sip there. In the meantime, I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Stay tuned for Tech Talk.